Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience, working primarily Monday to Friday in the financial services sector, five times AWS certified, and I have nothing more in my spare time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. We're now in the lesson four in this DynamoDB 101 series that we've been looking at throughout the course of three previous lessons. First lesson, we built the tables. Second lesson, we looked at getting and inserting that data. Last lesson, we looked at DynamoDB transactions, which was that all or nothing approach to interacting with the tables. And then in this lesson, we're gonna look at DynamoDB streams. DynamoDB streams is kind of an interesting one. So what are DynamoDB streams? In more traditional databases, there's a concept known as a trigger. And a trigger is where an action is carried out on a table, like insert row, that then tells the database to carry out an action somewhere else in the database. But we're not working in relational databases and DynamoDB doesn't have triggers. Instead it has strings, and a stream is a place where we can put data on that has changed in our DynamoDB table. So DynamoDB give an option of a stream. We go in, we turn on the stream in the console, and when we make an update, insert, or delete, DynamoDB places that item onto a stream. It gives us the option to see both the old image, how that item looked before we made the change, and the new image, how that item looked after the change, and then we can read it off the stream using a Lambda function and carry out an operation. So in this example, I'm gonna use the orders table. When we make an order request, I'm gonna push that onto a stream, run a Lambda function, and then use that Lambda function to insert it into an audit table. And that's a really good use of a DynamoDB stream where you wanna carry out an audit on an action that's happened. Not really much more to it, other than you need to see it in action. So let's jump onto the console and get underway. Hi guys, welcome back to the console for lesson four. We're gonna take a look at DynamoDB streams and triggers. As usual, all the codes on GitHub, we've already downloaded it in the previous lessons, so you will have it if you've already downloaded it. If not, go back to a couple of other lessons and get everything set up because you will need again the tables that we've set up before alongside the data that resides in them. What we're going to do in this lesson is tackle the table we haven't used yet, which is order status. And the idea of this table is that when an order is placed, it updates the order status table with the status of that order. And to do that, I'm going to enable um, DynamoDB strings on the order table. And when that order is updated or inserted, it will put what's known as the image, or if you think about it as the item, onto the stream. And you have a couple of options. We can either use the old item, new item, both are keys but I'll explain that as we look at it now. And then I'm gonna use a Lambda function to pick it up off that stream and then place it into the order status um, table. So to do that, it's exporting streams, funny enough. And um, we wanna go down to the bottom and we wanna to go to DynamoDB table details here, stream details here. So here's the options. We can have key attributes only, which gives you just the key. So it would only be the order ID or the order table. New image, which is what I'm going to use, which is how the item looks after it was changed. So I want to look at the order after it was changed. The old image, which gives you how it looked before we placed the order. If you were doing an update, for instance, you would get how the line looked before you did the update. With new image, you get look how it looks after. And then old and new images is where you get both. But for the purposes of this, make sure you click new image for the code and enable stream. In experience, this takes a few seconds um, to come up. It says enabled already, so that should be as good to go. Okay, once the stream is up and running as enabled, we wanna to go to create trigger. We wanna go and create a new function. Hit create new. I'm gonna call this function just test because it's easy to remember. And we wanna to go to Python 3.6 and we wanna create the function. It takes a few seconds. Once created, the most critical thing to do here and everyone needs to follow along is go to configuration we want to go to permissions and we want to go to the role. We have to give the role permissions to interact with DynamoDB. So attach policy and I'm going to give it Dynamo um, full access. So just click there and attach the policy. Critical. So repeat that. Must attach the policy or else it won't work. Back into Lambda. Back into code. Click on the Lambda underscore function. Back on the Cloud9, if you open up the Lambda trigger file and we just do a Control-A, Control-C, i.e. copy and paste, and we want to replace all this information with what we have here. Click Deploy, so that's also critical. Make sure you click Deploy, and let's have a little look at what the code's doing. So same as before, I've got that order status table here, and you can see that corresponds to the order status table back on the DynamoDB console. All the other tables declared DynamoDB um, is coming through as the client on the Boto3 library here. A couple of different things. So records come off in a array. So what I'm doing here is getting the records of the event records. I'll print it out the logs so we can take a look. Um, the new image is the new image that we just spoke about at, 
at the start of this video where I want the new image of the item. So I want the attributes as they look on the new image. I set the item here and then out here, it's a dynamo underscore client dot put. So I just want to put that item into the order status table. So this is going to run on the stream. It's going to be a trigger. So when the stream's up and running and we make a change to the order table, it's going to run this Lambda and then insert this item that it creates on the fly into the table. Back on to here then, you want to hit the refresh button when we're on the create trigger. You should have your lambda sitting there and we want to create the trigger. Perfect. Back into transactions, change your order ID to one if it isn't at one and you want to save those changes and run. Change then your order ID to two and you want to save those changes and run. And you want to do this a couple of times because it takes a little while for that stream to get going. So you want some data just to kick it in the gear. So there's four and there's five. Okay, let's jump back onto the console. So in order, if we go down to the streams, uh, we can see the, the items still in process. So I'm just going to send a few more just to kick it again. Um, that's one of like the kind of downfalls when people do this for the first time. They don't see things appearing in the stream and they automatically think that they've they've got something wrong. So sometimes you do have something wrong, but it, it takes a wee minute to come through. So if I do this and run again, okay. And just double check the Lambda is correct. Yep, let's do this. And as you can see now, I took about seven or eight items and at last resource, last processing result is okay. So that's what we want. And once we go back up into order status this time, you can see in items what we've actually done is process, well, it's got the first one, the order ID of six and order status ID of one. So let's go back into the Lambda. And as you can see, we keep overriding with the order ID. So if we wanted a different one, let's just hit two. Let's hit deploy. Let's go back out this time and change this to seven. So that's the whole thing. Remember DynamoDB because the order ID order status ID isn't changing inside the Lambda function. Um, it means that we're constantly overriding it. So if I send that again and that Lambda has deployed and we go back down and we click refresh, you can see how instance it is, instantaneous it is now that the, uh, that the stream's up and running. Um, and let's do one more for completeness. So let's change this to three. So we want the order ID of three. Oh, not test. Deploy. Back onto Cloud nine here and i'm just going to call this one 10 for simplicity save it run gone and refresh here you can see it's coming off the stream now so it's hitting the order table coming through the stream and arriving in order status that's everything for this kind of series guys um it's been great all our code is free on github so i advise you to go and play around with it there's a lot there there's a lot to take in but anything you mess up you can just restart again I'll make all this information for free as usual on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.